Today we're talking one of the most storied scale designs by one of the most well-known manufacturers, Kawai. We're talking about the GX2, which is the current 511 model from Kawai, has a very rich history. We're gonna to be touching on where it came from and why it's one of the best pianos available on the market. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Ted, this is one of my favorite pianos. Mine too. Um, but such a rich history, uh, when I think of the, uh, you know, the 2 series, I'm just going to call it the 2 for right now, but when I think of the 2 from Kawhi, so this is obviously the GX2, um, it's very similar to the feeling I get when we talk about C3 from Yamaha. So, you know, one of the most sought after instruments that you see in studios and churches and households and uh, really just sought after because um, this has a rich history starting as the number 500 is, is what the original 5 foot 10 Kawhi was called. It, we see them come in sometimes when it says like number NO period 500 to 5 foot 10, um, eventually switched over to a KG2. So there's that two. Um, and uh, the KG2s, you just see, you know, you see them everywhere. Those were all over. I think I have played more gigs on KG2s than any other acoustic grand piano, only because of proximity that the thing was there at the venue. Mm -hmm. And in the 80s and 90s, uh, Alamo, we were a Kawhi dealer, and they were all over the city. Mm -hmm. uh, Churches, teachers have them. Everywhere, venues. And they had so many, these like convention spaces. Well, now they have larger convention spaces, but back then there were so many smaller uh, venues for the convention business mm -hmm. and almost every single place that had space for lots of people had, had a grand piano in a lobby or something like that. And it was a very loved uh, scale design, sound, really just a rich sound from something being a five foot ten in size. Um, and so really that kind of became a staple of this is, you know, the center of our line. It's not ultra expensive. It's not super big. It's the one that would fit in a home, um, would fit in a studio, really kind of just became known as the sound of Kawhi, that KG-2. There's different models. Well, I know sometimes I walk in and think, oh, great, man, they got one of these KG-2s, and you open it up and play, man, this one's kind of different. You look and it said number 500 or 500 something mm -hmm. on it. And then I think that was the predecessor to the yeah, KG-2. Yeah, the 500. The 500. And I played a lot on those, too. Yeah, so the 500, it switched to the KG-2. Um, and then in uh, mid-90s, I think in 93, 94, they switched over um, to the RX series. Those were nice pianos. And so the RX series uh, was really a little bit more of the introduction of uh, composite materials into the instrument. Um, so they used an ABS action with some of the components um, on the RX. So the, the KG2 switched to the RX2. Um, still a 5 foot 10, still same scale design. Um, really just a, a very unique instrument that people start saying, hey, this is cool. There's some, there's, you know, composite materials. And, and it was, uh, you know, one of those things where the industry didn't know if like this is a good thing or is this a, a bad, bad thing. thing. Um, but really Kawhi had been experimenting with different materials for, you know, already 20 plus years um, at that point, um, starting in the 70s. Like, you know, they were looking at how do we make wood better? You know, how do we, how do we use a better material well, than wood? I want to go back to that because Kawhi was very, very brave and daring when they did that mm -hmm. because at the time, all the competitive brands of pianos that were out there took the ABS and the carbon graphic um, action mm -hmm. and converted it to plastic. Yeah. Okay. And so they said, well, they, their pianos have plastic in it. Well, then the, a lot of the people that were selling those pianos said, well, almost every piano has plastic and it. it's against the law to have ivory keys, so they have some form of plastic, mm -hmm. even though they don't call it plastic. Yeah, I mean, they don't. It's, they, there's a fancy marketing It's a fancy form. marketing name. So the RX, uh, pretty big hit, RX2, in 2004, that is when they released the Millennium 3 Action. Um, and so the ABS components actually switched over to the carbon ABS. And so they used carbon components, carbon fiber, uh, really becoming a more modern instrument. And at that point, there were some really firm believers in, you know, the future of piano being, you know, some sort of better material like golf clubs, like bicycles, um, uh, switching at some point from wooden right. componentry and machinery to, you know, hey, this is going to be a repetitive moving thing. Let's use a better material than just wood because wood breaks down. It's, uh, you know, susceptible to 
humidity to weather temperature changes, all that. Um, and so uh, 2004, the RX stays the RX2, um, but gets a big upgrade with that action, 2004. Um, and, uh, and then goes all the way to, to, I believe in 2010, they, they started the Black Series, which is B-L-A-K. Um, and so you see that on modern GX2s, um, continuing the Black, uh, you know, before it, the RX series had it um, as the predecessor. So there was RX2 regular, then there was RX2 black. And that, uh, you know, they introduced, um, the, the hammer shank changed a little bit. They, did, they basically did a resin um, uh, componentry on it to make it a little bit sturdier, um, just, you know, improve the piano, make, make adjustments. Um, but then uh, in 2013, they kind of relaunched the whole line. Here we are today, the, um, GX. the GX series. Um, so the GX2 black, um, was, you know, made in 2013, was announced at the NAMM show, really kind of people were well, very Well, they impressed. entirely reconfigured everything mm -hmm. about the, uh, the series of piano, particularly I think a lot of it was because of the GX2, because that was, has always been one of their top selling, whether it was an RX or the KG line, it was really a top selling and performing piano. Uh, in so many venues and recording studios. It was right there at professional grade. Mm -hmm. And so they had reconfigured everything along with this one. In other words, it's not just going to be the same piano. We're going to perfect it. We're going to take the design and we're going to perfect it. And so they came out with this whole concept where from the, the base and the bottom, it's going to have this kind of strength and stability that's going to come through uh, the pin block into the over... Uh, what they call the overlapping stretcher bar. Mm -hmm. And then that along with the other components, uh, changes in the rim material and in some of the interior design for how the action rails lay out, all of that basically meant almost like a new piano for them and a new line. Yeah, and I think this, uh, in the industry, this was a very key time to do something like that. It seems like it was a couple years uh, after Yamaha made their big announcement with the, the X CFX, series. Yeah. Um, and so the X series after Yamaha bought uh, Bosendorfer, uh, you know, they started incorporating, you know, new marketing, new pushes. And so the C3 became the C3X. Yeah, newer fabrics to the mm -hmm. uh, um, fabrics and also newer woods, soundboards, all those kind of things from from one of their subsidiary companies. It was hard to think of that it's a subsidiary, but it is ownership. But uh, they moved some of those nicer features into their own piano line. And they, they raised the price. And they raised the price. And, and they so, made a better instrument at and, the same time. And, and so Kawhi a lot did of, the same thing. A lot of people think, uh, you know, when they look at Yamaha, they look at Kawhi. And, you know, they, they, there's this a very, you know, comparable price point, comparable uh, instrument in a lot of people's eyes saying, hey, let's try this one out, let's try this one out. Um, so they make similar offerings. Um, but just like the C3 and the KG2 of the past, the modern day battle, I would say, of, hey, I'm looking for something in that, you know, six foot range, six foot range is the GX2 versus the C3X. Um, and so the GX2, again, to, to your point, kind of just reinvented itself as, hey, our scale design is there. It's people love the sound. Um, let's improve all the materials. Let's improve um, the build on this instrument and make it as as incredible as we can. Um, so it did gain an inch. And we were looking at where did that inch come from? Yeah, it looks like that inch came out um, in in two areas. One of them is uh, going to be the longer key and key button action on it, mm -hmm. and then also the uh, exaggeration of the uh, stretcher stretcher bar. Yeah, so they um, made a thicker stretcher they, bar. They right made a you... thicker stretcher bar, and, and those two things kind of run congruently. And I think it added about an inch or inch and a half to the, so, the overall measurement. So of technically, it's a five eleven, whereas the predecessors had all been five ten. What is a what does a longer key mean? A longer key. Uh, in, in most of their marketing advertising, basically it means uh, they have more control mm -hmm. and over a, a stabler area, it's a stabler control. So it does allow you to play faster and lighter, which was not really possible on some of their predecessor models. And so there's really an exaggeration of pianissimo mm -hmm. is what they really talk about. But I kind of wish that sometimes they would talk about what we love around here, which is like the piano's freshly tuned, it's brand new, let's see how how many dissonant notes we can put in it and just see how the dissonant sounds because you get such a great tonality of the warmth and everything coming off and off of the rim and then the way that they built the, the underneath it. You can tell it's just on a much more stout uh, foundation and frame. Yeah, I think they, they created this whole entire piano with the idea of let's 
control as much sound as we can on the soundboard with the harmonics. Just give, let this thing ring. Um, and so that being said, let's take a listen to the piano here, and then we'll come back and talk about some of like the finer features of what really makes the GX2 a very special instrument. Uh, but let's take a listen here and uh, have some fun playing it.
I'm glad we talked about those longer keys because just in that, you know, those minutes of us playing the instrument, you really do feel a lot of control. Um, and you think about a concert sized instrument, we've had the pleasure of playing and performing on the SKEX, their nine foot two monster of a piano. Uh, but you think about how much longer the keys are on a, on a concert instrument like that and them trying to squeeze as much of a key as they can into a sub six foot right. piano is really, you know, the idea of a performance in mind and and having that you know really giving you control as a player well yeah the other thing that that most everyone notices when they sit down on the gx particularly the gx2 is that this is a little bit more powerful than most pianos mm -hmm. even though it's not really six foot and above or six one or six two it has the power of about a six and a half foot piano so the volume and the touch on is like whoa this is something to kind of play lightly and if you play heavy on it it's really a great great sounding instrument and you know part of what what you're feeling when you sit down and play there is I want to go kind of a little bit backwards in their marketing because they, mm -hmm. they went through trying to gr grab the player and everyone and walk them through and I want to go the backwards way yeah, through it, so I want to talk about their foundation right okay? before you do that I, I because we're going to go over more some more technical side of this instrument and really what separates the GX kind of from the rest of the series from other pianos um, I want to point out that when they did create uh, the GX um, series uh, they also created the GL series um, and so they have the same scale design that 510 511 scale design um, in the GL 40, 40. Um, but really doesn't have some of these finer details that we're talking about this is kind of what separates the GX2 um, with right. the exception of the action there's very you know there's besides the, the obvious design of it being a, a 511 um, some of these finer details are you know what the extra some people are like what why is it so much more expensive to get a GX if they're the same they're made in Japan they're both Kawhi they both have the Millennium 3 these are the finer details well that yeah part of it what you mentioned is like you said hey today we're doing videos on on the GX2 and you told me go read up do your homework make some notes so the idea was like I did that and then I did the other thing is like I'm gonna read up on the GLs because what is it that distinguishes the GXs from the GLs mm -hmm. that you don't get? And there's a lot of similarities, but where the changes are really the changes are almost the exact same changes as you get from when you go from the GX series to the SK series. Mm -hmm. um, again, the under support, the foundation, the rim, and, and, and all of these other things add in and it does produce a little bit bigger, rounder, warmer tone. Mm -hmm. from each model that, that you go through. But they, for the most part, they all kind of play alike. They yeah, play no, very the, similar. The touch on them is similar. But the result of how you play is mm -hmm. different on each model. I agree with that. The yeah. physical things that, that you're manipulating are pretty much the same. But what's not the same is their reaction to the rest of the instrument. The outcome, yeah. The outcome. Um, and so, like, part of what makes this one different is they, they had uh, come up with these ideas of elements of strength, elements of precision, elements of tone, and elements of artistry. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the marketing and presentation of this piano. And I like it uh, in, the, in the fashion that I have. If you look at the brochure, it's actually the other way around because most of the uh, listeners and readers are, are kind of familiar with pianos. Mm -hmm. But at that same time, I like to start at the bottom, which is the foundation. And, and so on this one here, they came out with uh, different kind of, of rims that they put on, onto these pianos and where they use a smaller pour uh, on the inside and then it, it gets to a, uh, 
harder pour wood on the outside mm -hmm. of the rim and they don't talk specifically about the kind of materials that they use in that rim uh, but but in, in this instance here it it's kind of like it's a maple and a in a, in a mahogany yeah and uh, it's, mix. it's a little bit layered in there so that they you know they have the idea of one of these woods responds very well to like bright tonality and the other one responds very well to like a warm or dark and so, so they put the bright one on the inside i think yeah, where it's close and, to the and they're and they're balancing it there and so you get you know the resonance of a, of a warm instrument with like the attack of a bright instrument which is really a cool concept yeah so they have this rim and beam construction and they have an acronym called core that stands for something kind of uh energy getting focused back in I didn't all the arrows go it. out and come all back all the arrows go out and so it's kind of like the support beams underneath uh, the soundboard in the bottom of the piano are like the spokes on a wheel. They go to a central spot. So there's two like here and here, and then there's a straight across, and then the piano rim. It's kind of means right where the pin block they is. They all come into like a V to a point where the pin block is right above it, where mm -hmm. it's the center of the soundboard. And they have a big giant steel cast iron type metal clamp that all of these fit into mm -hmm. and so that all of that energy is sent from the rim back and forth very similar to how other piano manufacturers at one time had what was called a tone collector and it's the same concept but almost with an upside down salad bowl made out of metal or steel up against the pin block mm -hmm. so that that energy is always being circulated and so it's not interfering with itself it's, and go, it, it right. knows which direction it has a go. direction to mm -hmm. go to and all of that leads into their um, overlap that stretcher bar that they have which they extended and they extended the stretcher bar on top of the piano which usually holds the back side of the rim to where it's actually incorporated over the pin block mm -hmm. and so that all of that is like one sealed unit and so if you're staring at at a, a grand piano, it's it's kind of right there where the where the key locks on the on the lid. That's right on top. It's always going to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the quiet's the one of the largest I've ever seen it, on, it's on a, a piano. It's a it's giant. Um, and that's, again, to control the energy, the flow, so you don't lose, you know, it doesn't disperse in a, in a thinner rim, even though right. the rim of the instrument is a little bit thicker. And that's also where the, the, the pins go in. So mm -hmm. it's like really, you know, their, their pin block is, is multi-layered, uh, uh, cross-banded. Yeah. And so that you're getting a real solid, a real solid foundation. And that's one thing, they, they do have a v, v pro plate instead mm -hmm. of a poured plate. Uh, which means that there's essentially no air inside uh, any of the, the yeah. molten iron or steel when it goes into the frame. Which has been kind of the modern take For at least on last 25 years, I think, they've mm -hmm. all been using a V-Pro plate. It's, you know, for perfection. You know, it's, right. it's instead, of, instead of having a, a method that could leave, you well, know, imperfections in your plate of your, of your piano. The old method was like a cake batter. I mean, mm -hmm. you had to pour it into a sand thing and then you just kind of had to, you know, get all the air bubbles to, to come out of it. So... It's, it's better now, it's stronger now, and uh, they, they use cross-banded um, North American hard, hard maple mm -hmm. uh, in, in the bottom part of their, of their, their key beds, I think. Uh, the other thing they, they talk about is the key bed, mm -hmm. because they, they do put these action rails, that's why we have this action up here, because it's kind of hard to explain a dual action rail without looking at two rails, so we just have these little itty bitty pieces of rail there yeah but the idea behind the dual action rail being made out of aluminum is so that neither end either the back end or the front end of either the action or the hammer and, and where the the hammers lock in at ever move they they it's just precise yeah, it's like double the f shape is like a double secure too it's it's a yeah and there's a lot a lot of details in here that that is part of their uh, detail marketing on what makes the piano that much different but for the most part from the GL the GX and even up to the X SK they do change some of these components but it's the exact same action and overall kind of key length and key buttons and all of that is on every model the GX does distinguish uh, have a mahogany, mahogany hammer. tipped hammer mm -hmm. um, and that that is a little bit of a price increase over the GLs that is one thing that they have in there the other thing they have uh, I mentioned about they have this permanent lock rack on the back so that none of these hammers ever roll and that's part of how they have this kind of thing this steel on top is um, they say it's serrated but it's more like sandpaper on top well because that's what they they normally use sandpaper to keep things from moving but sandpaper over time you know yeah they built this sandpaper into the steel which yeah, is pretty so cool it, so it's serrated and it's <coughs> a little bit more uh 
to the point. Yeah, and so they've, they've done a lot of different things uh, with in terms of the precision so that all of the action components that in, in foresight, there'll never be any kind of loosening or any kind of uh, problems with that. Mm -hmm. Certainly in terms of uh, the humidity and the changes in, in, in temperature and humidity that the piano is going to experience over its life. Yeah. It's pretty solid. No, yeah, one of the most solid. So we have a, a whole video on the Millennium 3 action too that kind of highlights some of that. So if you guys are interested in a little bit what makes the Millennium 3 uh, unique, I would recommend taking a look at that video as well. The other thing I want to talk about is... Um, when they get into the, the elements of tone. Mm -hmm. And what makes this neat is, uh, I think this is the first series of pianos that they started where they actually tapered down the soundboards. A lot of them oh, used yeah. to just kind of smooth them out on the edges. Now they're actually tapered down. Mm -hmm. with a, So there's like a longer flow in the reduction of the board so that it can vibrate a lot, mm -hmm. a lot freer. And uh, they also have uh, this bridge design for the GX that was special where they have 11 different layers of uh, laminated uh, mahogany and maple, that hard rock maple that actually make up the bridge so that the sound travels directly straight down. Mm -hmm. On the GLs, which I know we're not talking about, but they have a solid bridge yeah, instead so of a laminated a bridge. Laminated bridges uh, actually transfer sound a lot more uh, efficiently and um, speedily mm -hmm. as opposed to a solid, solid bridge. The other thing they, they talk a lot about is they have a, I think it's pronounced Konsai Kontegi, Mm -hmm. uh, it's the rims, and it is uh, the way that the rim is put together and the thickness of the rim that actually holds all of the, um, the components together. Yeah, the and source of the sound that's, that's there. part of what goes into making their tone. So part of it is to get a soundboard that floats, mm -hmm. but everything else, there's just zero movement. It's just vibrations moving through a solid foundation, but the soundboard is moving. Yeah. That's the whole idea on it. And in terms of what's in it for the artist, well, the one thing they, they do talk about is they have Neotex uh, key surfaces, which make it a lot like feel of old ivory mm -hmm. and the feel of ebony on, on the piano keys. And again, they do have the mahogany hammers, and that does make a difference for how the tonal clarity of the felt is a little bit different with the wood that's underneath uh, up to the tip on, on, on the... Uh, on the hammer. Yeah. So again, this is where the, the power of the pianissimo comes in. In other words, it's the real strength of playing soft and lightly. And these are great pianos to sit down to. And I do this sometimes when there's no one around. It's like, how soft can I play on this piano? Mm -hmm. And it's Still. always an ama there's always room for more practice and more expertise and how soft can I play on this piano? And that's with and without using, um, you know, the soft pedal over yeah. on the left. So it's kind of interesting when you add all these things together, uh, can you really tell if someone, I want to be able to see if, it, if the, the piano key is really an inch longer and if the buttons really do balance that much. I said, I don't know that you'll be able to prove that to yourself specifically, but mm -hmm. sit down and play one for a while. You'll notice there's a lot of things that are different that come together in a really beautiful way. Yeah, no, and, and it's, I think there's a reason why the GX2 is one of the best sellers for Kawhi. If you look at their website, um, it is the GX series that has the most to offer as far as finishes. So that kind of gives you a, a insight on, oh, this must be one of the best sellers if they offer it in, you know, eight different finishes. So, Lots of options. Yeah, and all the other ones are, are you know, you can get in, uh, polished ebony, you can get satin ebony, and usually polished white, um, and that, and maybe a wood finish. Um, most most of their GX series has three or four finish options. The GX2 has the whole list of them. So you know, you can get it in satin cherry. You can get it in a polished walnut and um, polished sapelli mahogany. There's uh, a whole bunch of finish colors, um, and really just an incredible instrument that uh, I think honors what the what the two series of Kawhi's have, have been all the way back from the 500. Sure, and then you know there's this personal assessment that I have with just the GX2 and I don't know if it's because I've played so many of those pianos mm -hmm. professionally but uh, not the GX2 but that kind of series and the his yeah. history of it and what I, I really notice about this piano that I absolutely love is that it is perfectly balanced from the bass to the top end. There isn't any section or anywhere where you notice there's a break in the strings, a break in the bridge, or a break in the frame. There isn't anywhere where the piano stands out one section over another. Mm -hmm. It's just a perfectly balanced, excellent grand piano. When you get into longer pianos, they're gonna, they're gonna have a deeper grand piano uh, string length. You're gonna hear more of a roar, and you, the bass is gonna start taking over more of the instrument, mm -hmm. which I used to like. Now as I get older, I like them just pretty well balanced. Yeah. So it all depends where you're at. 
But the GX2, I think, is one of their premier pianos that they manufacture. It's an incredible, incredible instrument. Um, please leave comments if you've ever played a GX2. Um, give us your you know, opinion of what it is. Um, we are going through the line of Kawhi making you know, videos on each of them because uh, you know, a lot of people have questions on you know, the small differences between, say, the GX2 and the GX5 or the 7 um, or the GL series. Um, but this is our video on the GX2. Again, an incredible instrument. I think um, one of the uh, you know, flagship models from Kawhi. Um, and really kind of sets the standard of what, a, you know, that intermediate to advanced to professional player would be looking for in an instrument that is, you know, less than six figures. Um, not, a, not a cheap instrument. The MSRP on, on, uh, on Kawhi's website uh, at the time of making this video is around 44000 43000 I think. Um, and so that's the retail price. Um, again, if you have played one or if um, you're interested in playing one, please go out to your local Kawhi dealer. Come see us. We have stores in Austin, San Antonio, St. Louis, Kansas City. Um, just come take a look, take a listen. It's a lot of fun um, to compare it to other pianos. And if you've had a KG in the past, a KG2 or um, an RX, it's really kind of fun to play. What's the new difference? What, is, what, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? Because um, Kawhi is a company that continuously innovates and adds to their product line. Ted Barslow, I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center. Thank you guys for watching.